ready. Is it on? Mm-hmm. It's been on. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Emily. And I'm Vince. And this is The Lighthouse Lowdown. <laughs> Happy New Year's Happy to everyone. New Year's. Welcome to the new year, to 2024, the year of Emily. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what 2024 brings. Yeah, I was really optimistic last year, and I think with the way that this year went, maybe I should just kind of see what happens. Ever since 2019, we've been on the uphill. Yeah. Uh, eh, I don't know. Not entirely true. <laughs> generally. Generally up. I think we're still going down, but the steepness, God, the steepness of the descent has... Uh, Lessened, more shallow descent. So, what have we got today for our New Year's episode? Well, I forgot to do a history buoy. <gasps> Gasp! I know it's so sad. Like most people, focus on starting the new year outright. You know, people are putting in a lot of effort and doing what they need to do. <laughs> you might as well let it finish. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. So. I failed at that, but uh, I at least I have an episode, so I could it could be worse. That's great. Okay, the lighthouse uh, that we're doing today is technically in Michigan, I believe. Technically, all right. Okay, wait. It's in the lake. It's uh, it, hang on a second. It's, yeah, it's definitely Michigan. Okay. We're going to Mackinac. Very good. Mm. No, just kidding. Mackinac <laughs> is an island. Okay. And uh, this lighthouse is called Mackinac, but it's not on the island. It's not Mackinac Island. It's, it's like a region then. It must be. It's, um, well, normally I keep it a secret, but I'll just tell you. It's old Mackinac Point Lighthouse. So there's a point, Mackinac, and an island. So I'm glad we ironed that out. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. We are the lighthouse lowdown. The story of this lighthouse goes back to 1838. Lieutenant James T. Hommins. Sailed 1,825 miles through Lake Huron and Lake Michigan, inspecting lighthouses and locating potential spots for new lighthouses. So this guy's, this guy had a long trip ahead of him. He passed through the Straits of Mackinac, and he recommended a lighthouse to mark the narrowest point. I'll uh, I'll pull up a photo of. I like that. The area we're looking at. Like That's photos. this little circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got our logo in a circle, and it looks quite nice. Satisfying. Much better than a square. And a rectangle. So I have it marked on here, the Straits uh, of Mackinac. So next is Sheboygan. Our two lakes come together to a point at the top, and that's where we have the Straits of Mackinac. So okay. you can imagine it's pretty narrow compared to the rest of the lakes, and there would be a lot of traffic going in between this spot. So Yeah, those are very industrious cities. Yeah. Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit. Sheboy, Sheboygan. Sheboygan. Yeah. That's something I won't improve on in the new year pronunciations. And we're going to see a lot of that in this episode. <laughs> I think the only reason I know how to say Sheboygan, or I think I do, is because of uh, the Griswold family Christmas. They say uh, that in there? Yeah, the guy, remember she has to fly home. She's She rides in a truck with the uh, polka, polka, polka. Um, John, it's not John Candy, is it? What, what movie are you talking about? Oh, no, 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 Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's the Christmas season. It's too far it from Christmas now. Yeah, and I was just thinking that's not right. Home, home alone. alone. Okay. Mom rides home uh with the guy, the comedian, the yeah, big yeah. guy. I forget his name. I don't think it's John Candy. Anyways. I can't help you out there. Cheboygan is one of his cities he brings okay. up. Yeah. So poka poka poka. Anyway, like just before we started, I'm sitting here, like two minutes before we started, I found out that it's spelled Mackinac and it's Mackinac. I absolutely would have recorded this entire episode Mackinac Mackinac I would snacks. have said it it said I was smart looked it up so I'm improving in the new year that's kudos to me mm-hmm. Straits of Mackinac yeah they're the connection between the two lakes and actually if you zoom in on Google Maps that little part of both of the lakes says Lake Michigan dash Huron so it's oh, like cool their little connection so Lieutenant James suggested the western half of the point since it's much higher in elevation and in theory could be seen from both sides. I don't yeah. think that ended up being true because Ooh. you'll see what happens. Okay, so I pulled up a picture of the point. Nice. It's just a, like, it's like the end of a bone is what it looks like. So on one side you have old Mackinac point and on the other side you have McGulpin point. And I'll cover McGulpin point sometime. I thought uh, you said the west side. 
Yeah, yeah. So the, here's the initially chose. Gotcha. Yeah, initially okay. chose the western side. And since this area is so well traveled, there's lots of lighthouses that have popped up. You even in this picture, you can see a couple of them. Saint Helena <laughs> Island. Yeah. The Golden Point. Wawatam. Wow. Wawatam. There's probably there's a several more. There's so that. many. Um, and just so you know. You and I have scheduled to talk about our next lighthouse trip. That's and right. I'm going to pitch this idea to you. Oh, so you know you're giving it away. So I'm invested in this episode. You have to learn how to pronounce everything. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of lighthouses. The Western approach ended up being marked by Wagashants. Wagashants. <laughs> Is this a Native American tribe? Of course. Mm. I seem to struggle most with those. Wagosh, Wagoshans. If anyone lighthouse is familiar with the pronunciation, please let yeah, us know. Yeah, I'm not going to be offended if you correct me. Actually, in fact, it'll be a blessing. Anyway, and that was completed in 1851 at the same time that the Sheboy, Sheboygan, Sheboygan Lighthouse was completed, which marked the southeastern entrance to okay. the strait. Nice. So they still hadn't reached putting one on the narrowest point. And it wasn't until 1865 that the lighthouse, lighthouse board started pushing for a lighthouse, and they suggested one at Fort. Michili <laughs> 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 Mackinac. Michili Mackinac. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is when they built McGulpin Point Lighthouse. So old Mackinac hasn't even come into play yet here. And they built McGulpin Point on. Open point two miles west of the fort, which was completed in 1869. So the fort, with the picture pulled up, it's right where it says Mackinac City. That's where the fort was. Okay, that's two miles. Wow. Yeah. So exactly, they're so close. It's so still, two two miles. I was miles. thinking it was a lot closer than two miles. Yeah. Oh. So that bridge is. Oh no! I'm going to talk about six it. Miles, seven miles. <laughs> eight, eight miles. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You're not even on coffee right now. I know. McGulpin Point was built. But the light was not visible from the east, or at least not very clearly visible from the east. Yeah. <laughs> and in 1888, the board wanted to move McGulpin Point Lighthouse Ambitious. to Old Mackinac Point. Okay. Congress approved money to build a new lighthouse on the point instead, with the stipulation that McGulpin would be discontinued or, you know. Uh, retired. Yeah, retired. And the board fought against that and won the right to keep both because Mackinac Point is only like eight feet above sea level. And McGulpin Point, which is only a couple miles away, is 70 feet above sea level. Okay. So you, it, it would be a disservice to build a new lighthouse so that it could be seen from the east and suddenly not be visible from the west. They're like, no, we need both lighthouses. So hold on. Someone's idea was to move the lighthouse. Yeah. Congress said no. Build a new one. Mm-hmm. But you can discontinue the McGulpin Point. Yeah. And then someone else... Said we need both. No, Lighthouse Board said, no, 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 we're not saying. Oh, the Lighthouse yeah. Board said both. Yeah, they're, they're not saying. I see. Congress is being all stupid. Co- yeah, Congress, Congress just like. doesn't know what they're talking about. Okay, just dish out the money and leave the thinking to the Lighthouse Board. Lighthouse Board, yep. <laughs> so after all of that, Old Mackinac Point Lighthouse was built only a couple miles away from McGulpin in 1892 by John P. Schmidt for just over $13,000. And that's how we ended up with two lighthouses basically right next to each other on this point. Nice. Yeah. I'll cover um, the gulpin. It's, it, they, they're built in the same, they're the same vibe. I'll show you a picture. Um, but old Mackinac Point light station consists of the lighthouse, a keeper's dwelling, or maybe two. Oh, no, yeah. One keeper's dwelling that's like a duplex, but it's very fancy. I'll show you. Mm. A barn, an oil house, and a fog building. Look at that. That is cool. Isn't that beautiful? That's awesome. I can't remember what they said. It's sad. I I really wish I could remember what they described this style of architecture as, but basically it's castle. Yeah. So people who aren't looking at the images, it's like lime, it's in black and white, but limestone, white brick, um, large cuts of rock. Yeah. Very. And like a metal roof. Uh, yeah. Metal tin and it's bright red. Oh, cool. Yeah. So the whole thing was built. To look like a castle, really. That's the awesome. the top flat parts of some of the ha- like around the house are very square with the slits cut in them mm. for like water flowing through. For archers, yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Very really tall, cool. very skinny windows, which I feel like would be very crampy. But it works. But yeah. So the tower is thirteen feet and four inches wide, and it's cylindrical but doesn't taper like normal lighthouses. Mm-hmm. So 
it makes up the northwest corner of the dwellings. And so it's connected to the dwellings by a, um, what is it called? A service, like a service room. Yeah. Yeah. So then you can access the tower without having to go outside. It's 50 feet tall to the focal plane. I want to say it's like 60. I can't remember. So it's, I think, 57 feet to the tip of the lightning rod. Okay, nice. And it's made of buff colored brick on a base of limestone ashlar. What is buff colored? Buff is, um, it's just like a tan. Okay. The light has a circular gallery and an octagonal lantern room with a fourth order revolving lens that produced a red flash every 10 seconds. And they changed that to white in 1913. The lens had 10 flash panels and was rotated with a weight that had to be rewound every three hours. So the clockwork was run by a counterweight. So this, okay, this tower, I'm thinking about the height of it, is a lot taller than I thought it was going to be. Because you said the elevation is only eight feet. Yeah. Off like the earth elevation Mm -hmm. above sea level. Or above yeah. water level. Above, yeah, water. Okay, above the lake. But, but yeah. And then this is a focal plane of 50 feet. Mm-hmm. Do you know MacGuffin Point? Is it a lot taller? What's? Isn't it MacGuffin? McGulpin. <laughs> McGulpin. Unless I'm pronouncing oh it wrong. Are you scared? You scared me. I was like, you yeah. didn't say no, I'm anything? I'm just sitting here like, you know. McGulpin. Thinking. I bet it's pronounced a different way. It's the one I didn't look up. So McGulpin for McGulpin. the moment. Do you know the height of that one? Um, it was a hot, uh, um, obviously they have different flash <laughs> patterns, right? So yeah, let me look it up. So it's 38 feet tall. So almost exactly the same. Total above sea level is something like a hundred and something feet. Oh, wow. Cause it's yeah, uh, 102 feet to the focal plane. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. These gentlemen in this photo look so proud. They always do. Everyone stand around. And honestly, the photographer man's taking a picture. This picture was taken in 1892, so that's a very old photo, which means they probably had to stand there for they a while. They did a pretty good job. Yeah, it's really excellent photo. I mean, it looks like it could be a current day photo in black and white. Also, if you look at like modern day bricklayers, yeah, like some guy comes up and he starts his own business at the age of 18, mm. um, and then they're like, "Oh, look, we put brick in front of this guy's garage." Wow, that's like their website. And then you show, like, look at these guys. Look, they built a castle. Uh, a <laughs> castle that serves a very important purpose. Like, uh, that's, that's It's crazy because it's not just artistry. And $13,000 so cool. was the lowest bidder for that's building this nuts. lighthouse. Just crazy how much effort they put into visually appealing lighthouse. Yeah, look at the round windows at the top. Big yes, fan. it's all this fan. lighthouse. Everyone really, seriously... Please go look it up. It's it's life changing. So I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. <laughs> okay, we we're talking about the red roof. Mm-hmm. 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 So the dwelling, yep, <laughs> is arranged as two two story houses under one roof, and they're connected okay. in the middle by a small lobby. I'm like, oh, well, how fancy is this? Nice. And that's also connected to the service room, so you can access the tower without having to. Yeah go into anybody else's space or go outside. That makes sense. Yeah, so lobby to service room to tower, and then they separate. Very nice. After completing the lighthouse, the board noted that the fog signal building was too close to the dwellings and needed to move away 50 feet. 50 feet's pretty far. Did they note it because the building was shaking and there was fog? <laughs> I, they, must, they must have complained. But Is this a bell you would think, or a horn? Oh, uh, At this time, I would... Probably a foghorn. I didn't make any note, but it, it may have been steam whistle. Oh, Too yeah. close. Needed to move it yeah, away. This, gotcha. is, this is almost the 1900s, so probably a steam whistle. But and just, just 50 feet away is like notable. That's not just, that's 50 feet. <laughs> yeah, it's like how, I how did down you not, nine times. Like when these plans were all laid out. And the other thing is that the fog building was only seven and a half feet from the edge of the property. So did you... Th- were you just trying to squeeze it in and like Maybe. didn't care about the 50 feet? I don't know. It's a failure. Get it built. <laughs> so they needed to buy land in order to move the foghorn to an acceptable distance. And that land belonged to the city of Mackinac. Mackinac planned on using that space for a public park. And so they said, no, you can't have it. <laughs> yeah, we don't want your <laughs> So you know that's going to work out for the city of Mackinac. To be like, no thanks. We were actually planning on a park there. Um, so get out of here with your, looks, your looks usefulness. Looks at your nice lighthouse, but. 
Like, no, thank you. So condemnation proceedings started in 1899, and the judge ruled $400 was adequate for uh, the land. Wow. City of Mackinac objected a year later, being like, no, $400 is not enough. And the court took four years after that to decide that $400 was, in fact, a fair amount to pay for this land. So they were stuck with this Foghorn building. They didn't have any inflation back then. 50 Just imagine feet too close. Four years going by and the land being worth the same amount of, amount of money. You know, with how much stone this <laughs> castle, that's, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, mm. after all of this time, it definitely appreciated in value. And the lawyer like, bills oh. accumulated to 12 cents. I could hardly pay for it. <laughs> Poor city in Mackinac. They just, they just wanted to fight for themselves. No way. <laughs> so anyway, in 1906, a new fog signal building was built with the old one moved behind the station and used for storage. So they didn't raise it or anything. They just moved it and repurposed it. Mm. But yeah, from, from when they decided it was too close, it took... Like a total of six years. That's crazy. Last week. I can't imagine waiting six years for oh. you to move the giant steam whistle 50 I feet know. away from me. And it was the same guy. He was probably like, I would love to get out of here. It's probably <laughs> manual back then too. Yeah. They got to pull a string and it's like, what? you know, whatever the sound would be. Pull a string. You know? Like it's a toy. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> 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 that is not what I meant, but I like that. Pull a string and then it would just set off an explosion of steam. Yeah. into that whistle, and then uh, they would lose some hearing. Six years. Okay. Okay. And then? <laughs> well, so the first part of this lighthouse, there was a headkeeper position and an assistant position. It was from 1890 to 1909. Hmm. And then at that time, a second assistant position was opened. So there was only four headkeepers total over the span of this lighthouse's 67 years in service. With 67 years is pretty short compared to some of the other lighthouses yeah. that we've covered. Yeah. Um, the first head keeper was George W. Marshall, who spent eight years at Wag Wagashants <laughs> Wagashants Lighthouse before that, and then he was relocated to here to be the first keeper. He was one of five sons of William Marshall, who is the ordnance sergeant at Fort Mackinac, mm -hmm. Michilly Michilly Mackinac, <laughs> and. All five of those sons became lighthouse keepers. So wow. I don't know what happened. From explosives to lighthouses. That that a sergeant at a fort would have sons that all went into lighthouse keeping. I don't uh, know. Maybe they only had a couple children's books. One of them was. <laughs> <laughs> In 1900, Charles Marshall, which was one of George's brothers, uh, was stranded on a, is it Boatswain's chair? I don't know. He's stranded on a chair. Yeah, he was paint. He he was the keeper at Saint Helena Island Lighthouse, the one that was in the corner of the image that I yes. showed you of the maps. Yeah, and he was painting the side of the lighthouse and got stranded in his chair. Oh no, his chair got stuck. Yeah, and he died. Um, no, he fell and died. But it devastated his mental health. Oh, so like it kick started him. <sighs> like he ended up in an asylum. Oh after. no. Yeah, it, it's very sad. So. I couldn't find the story of what really ha like you know what happened up there or how long he was stuck oh up there God. or like the story, but basically he got stuck and couldn't be head keeper anymore. He needed like assistance, and so he moved over to Old Mackinac to serve as George's first assistant keeper. Yeah, and the first assistant keeper at um, Old Mackinac moved over to Saint Helena Island Lighthouse to be the head keeper. Okay, so nice. it's just a little swap. So his health deteriorated. For two years until he had to be hospitalized at Northern Michigan Asylum. And Damn. as far as I know, he passed away there because I couldn't find... Th there He di he didn't enter back into like the lighthouse out. world or anything. So yeah. he didn't check out. <laughs> exactly. That sucks. Yeah. So George and his wife, Margaret, adopted some of Charles' children when he was um, institutionalized. Okay. And one of them, Chester, became a lighthouse keeper and served at... No, I forgot to look this one up. Um... Manitowoc <laughs> for 30 years. Wait. So can you believe that? Manitowoc. Manitowoc. That's course. what I'm saying. That's for what I'm saying. For 30 years. So third, no, just second generation. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. His and and he had another mad. job. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. I was launching it. You had another job? Charles? No. Uh, Charles had another adopted son named James, and he also became a keeper and served at White Shoal Lighthouse until George retired in 1919. And then he took over as head keeper at Old Mackinac. 
family business. I know. A stroke forced his retirement in 1940. So he served at the lighthouse for a total of 21 years after his dad Mm. retired from this lighthouse. So I'm pretty sure in total, the marshals served for like 40 something years at this lighthouse. That's crazy. Yeah. So for the next decade, Henrik Olson served as head keeper, followed by John P. Campbell until 1957. And at that point, the Mackinac Bridge was completed, which is that really long bridge that you wanted yeah, yeah. to estimate the distance of. And I was like, no. <laughs> I didn't do like a lot of coverage on it. Mm, okay. But uh, because the bridge was built, it's five miles long. Because oh, close. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because it had so many lights on it, like it's very well lit, mm-hmm. um, they decided to put the lighthouse out of service. Wait, because... You didn't need it because you could see the bridge. Because you could see the bridge. Oh my gosh! And it I was did not like see that coming. Yeah, so that's why this lighthouse service was so short. It's because they deemed it unnecessary after the building of the bridge. So just the one? No, yeah, just just old Mackinac. Just old Mackinac. I know because because it's it's literally the beginning of the bridge and the lighthouse are <sighs> within like a five minute walk of each other. So, well, it's kind of. I mean, I guess. I guess. It's just kind of sad. I would prefer to have a lighthouse. So when was that? That was in 1957. Okay. That's so not bad like, yeah, for lighthouses. So it's early to discontinue, but but by then the Coast Guard had taken over control of beacons, and so I'm sure they were like, excellent. Yeah. So what happened after 57? So in 1960, Mackinac Island State Park Commission purchased the lighthouse and restored it for $70,000. And... Oh, oh, and opened it again in uh, 1972 as the center of Michilly Mackinac, Michilly Mackinac Maritime Park. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> you can just have a kick out of me trying to pronounce everything. Unfortunately, they had to close in 1990 um, just because they didn't have budget. And mm. I think it just wasn't kicking off as much as they were hoping. Wow. 18 the park. years. Yeah. But in 1996, fundraising was launched by Jim... Belial, I want to say his name is, Mm -hmm. whose great grandfather was John P. Smith, which is the one that uh, built the lighthouse. Okay. I feel like I've heard Belial before. Maybe Maybe it's just a common last name. I don't know. I didn't look it up. I feel like Belial's not very common. But his great grandfather was Smith. Yeah. Okay. After $2.2 million of restoration, they opened again in 2004, and it has an amazing view of the Straits of Mackinac, and they play like shipwreck movies in the barn so when you visit you can go in and take a seat they have the original fourth order to lens for you to look at you can climb the tower it's all very fun that's insane you so did they take this on 1990 until 2004 it was um late 1990s yeah. to 2004 i think in 2000 it was open it was maybe open or the fog signal building was open. I didn't make a note of which one it was. That's but wild. $2.2 million. They partially opened in 2000 and then 2004 was when you could actually go and like start climbing the Everything. lighthouse and yeah. stuff. I'm not sure if they've used the $2.2 million or if they're, that was dedicated. that's what the budget is needed to completely restore it. Where did this guy get $2.2 million? It was all fundraising. Interesting. Or maybe he's rich. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, you said $70,000 was spent. In uh, in the first one, yeah, and then in nineteen ninety was when they closed those doors. So I was like, yeah, seventy grand, yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) two point two million. (laughs) I guess. I mean, I don't know this area at all, but I'm guessing that that is some prime real estate as well, being right on the water, right on the bridge. Yeah, historic value. It's got a steam whistle. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so pretty, and so there's the Mackinac Bridge in the background. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's like a five. It's takes five minutes to get there. That is a big bridge. Isn't that it's crazy? crazy? Yeah. You look up pictures, it's just like, it's like following the curvature of the earth. Beautiful right, grounds. that's dramatic, but still. Beautiful grounds. Yeah, they do a really great job. White picket fence. The red roof is really, really nice. We love red. Are, are we still building stuff today that's going to be around and kept special no, like this? of course not. It's unbelievable. I mean, we've needed to restore like all the lighthouses, but... <sighs> We yeah, need a lot more help if we were building these today. It's 2024. People are listening to this. So in the year 2200, someone's going to be spending 18 gazillion dollars yeah. to <laughs> restore something we built today. I don't. Oh, uh, doom and gloom. This is special. 
Oh, I don't mean to say that now is trash. I just mean like this is really cool. Well, I'm just hoping that in the future these things will still be upkept. Be so sad to see them go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not so sad. So today you can still go see it. You can climb the lighthouse. Yeah. You can see a movie in the barn. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> another thing is that there's a, it's just a little motel, but it has excellent reviews that is is a five minute walk from the lighthouse. Nice. So you're, you're basically right next to it. I think McGulpin Point, you can also stay in a keeper's cottage near that. Uh, but I didn't, this is not about McGulpin. So, but right. anyway, this area is like, you could stay here, and I think it'd be really cool for looking at lighthouses. Yeah, very pretty. Do you know, I'm keep still looking at this photo, what those round windows are for? Are those just windows that go, like I, porthole windows? I bet they're, it's a watch room where you watch for storms. Man, that looks strong. I, that's what I'm thinking is because you're barely above sea level, and you're right on the edge of the lake here. It's probably get some, get some waves. Yeah. I don't know. I pictures. would have built the residence a lot taller. Yeah. Or no windows on the first floor or something. I do. I wonder if it's if it floods often. Like, well, the know. lakes don't uh, the lakes don't rise a lot, do they? I don't know. It's not like flooding. Well, I guess I, I guess I don't know. It is a lot of water. We're pretty so. far removed from any water. <laughs> we're not. We don't know what we're talking. We're about. not nautical people, you know. <laughs> Only it in the heart. Yeah. Good job. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks for listening in and hope that you stick around with us this year because we're going to keep doing this regardless of what's going on. Did our winner of our uh, giveaway respond? Yes. Yeah, she's cool. she's going to get her cup. Very good. <laughs> just glad. I, uh, for those of you who don't know, we just did a giveaway. Yeah. Lasted uh, only like two weeks. That's all yeah, we gave people in December to um, enter to get a Stanley cup mm -hmm. not the hockey award of course but <laughs> <laughs> not the hockey trophy yeah. but a cup from the brand stanley with the the new lighthouse logo logo lighthouse lowdown logo um what is that laser Lasered. etching yeah, yeah pretty neat so we'll do more giveaways and swag in the future mm -hmm. but Glad to know that recipient will get their Stanley Cup. Yeah, and thanks for everyone who entered and was interested and listened to our Cape Disappointment episode. That was that was really cool. It was a good episode. YouTube actually. YouTube had a good turnout. So yeah, YouTube went crazy on that one. So yeah. so anyway, we hope that you will continue to join us this year. And oh no, it's coming. And uh, <laughs> 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 I'm there. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't ready. Hit it again. Um, Let's I go. guess I guess I suppose I suppose I don't need to go into the whole thing, but check out our uh, website, thelighthouselowdown.com. You can send us an email or a voicemail or something and tell us any lighthouse that you want us to cover. We want I mean our goal is to cover them all. So all of them. You all you have to do is send us a name and we'll follow up on it. Do all the research and you can hear us talk about it. You can also follow us on Instagram. We're on YouTube. Um, if you check out our website, you'll be able to find us on all of those. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yes. In case LinkedIn you as be well. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I guess that's it. Um, we hope you enjoy listening, and we'll catch you next time on the Lighthouse Lowdown. Oh,